I'm a seismologist at the University of Iceland. And today we are here out in Svartsengi to retrieve a seismic station which is now just 50 or 100 meters from the lava. The Icelandic Meteorological Office says this eruption is not decreasing as fast as all the previous eruptions that have happened so far. They even compare the current lava flow with the most powerful eruption at Fagradalsfjall, with the lava flow of the most powerful eruption at Fagradalsfjall. Eruption activity had decreased a little bit, but has stabilized overnight. So still at the moment, comparable to the most powerful eruption at Fagradalsfjall. And in light of this, there's still considerable threat to the infrastructure. And let's look at what they're doing right now, how they're fighting this thing. The sensor has been here for four years now, measuring earthquakes that have marked the intrusion of magma that's fed these eruptions. Uh, but now things have got a little bit too close to comfort, so it's time to save it from the lava. Hey guys, quick update from Iceland. The eruption activity has decreased a little bit, but despite the fact that it has decreased, the Met Office is still giving out a dire warning because we know what happened, not in the previous eruption, in the eruption before. It had decreased, but the lava still kept flowing underground and it was flowing underneath that black lava carpet against the defense walls and they're warning that this could happen still at Swartzengi at the Blue Lagoon and you've seen the pictures how close the lava is to the Blue Lagoon. They cannot risk that there is any breach where the Blue Lagoon is because it will flow right to the Blue Lagoon. There's not enough space to build another defense wall or to cool it quickly enough, in my opinion. If you remember how quickly that breach lava flew when it breached the Swartzengi defense wall in an area where there was enough space, it was far enough away from the power plant and the infrastructure. And what they're doing now, it's quite amazing. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. I want to give you an update about how they're working with these defense walls because the lava is higher than the defense walls in some areas. So reporters from RUV, that's the Icelandic television station, radio station, they have gone out there and they're standing on the defense walls and then you see the lava is actually higher. It has built up, it's creeping, it's threatening to creep over the defense wall. And what they're basically doing, and this is actually pretty cool, is they're using the existing lava carpet to work it into the defense walls. But how can they do this? Because that stuff is still hot and it's still moving around. And, and here comes the interesting Thing. So while we're talking, the Fraggle Rocks, these heroes and their excavators and dozers, they're out at Swartzangi and at the Blue Lagoon and their work is far from over. They're used a new cooling equipment to cool the lava carpet and to strengthen the edge of the tongue of the lava and use that to widen the defense wall. So they're saying, well, it saves us time and material. So what actually are they doing? So their main task is the dikes, the northern dikes around Swartzengi, that protect the Blue Lagoon and Swartzengi from that lava flow. You see the map here, the dark red stuff. This is where it has flowed very, very far west this time. Basically, like over the Blue Lagoon parking lot has completely destroyed that, has burned down a bus driver maintenance building. So what they're doing is they're trying to cool the edges of the lava that is flowing along that defense wall. And you can see this in this video behind me where the reporters are standing there, where you see they're standing on this leveled dike, and then you see this monstrous lava pile up that is even higher than them. So a geoengineer at EFLA, that's the company that's conducting a lot of these works, um, they say this way, if they're cooling this edge of that lava river, um, and that lava river could flow underneath that lava that you see on top, that black stuff. They're saying it keeps that lava river further away. So 
The lava reaches high above the dikes in many areas, and they say it's therefore important that we raise, that we also raise the defense walls in order from preventing the lava from getting over the dikes and then threatening the power plant and the Blue Lagoon and this valuable infrastructure like electricity, hot water, cold water, aside from their tourist attraction, right? So the reporters were right there and the geoengineer says, so in order that they would be able to raise the defense walls, they need to widen them first because you can only make them that high before you need to make them wider in order to get higher. And that's what they're using the lava cooling for. So they're cooling the lava that runs along this defense wall and that is strengthening the edges of the lava so that they are able now to extend the defense wall into that lava, which makes the defense wall wider. So they don't have to bring in all that material and push it against the existing defense wall and compact it. So they're using actually that lava carpet, saves them time and material and time is of the essence because that eruption is still going. And he says, you know, if we were to just take the backhoe and dig a little bit in, on into this edge, um, it's only two meters that they would be digging and then they would see it glowing hot. And that's why they're trying to cool this down further with the water, with the new equipment that they have, with the stronger pumps, the wider hoses, so they're able to pump more water effectively on that lava. Because the liquid lava, and that's the, the threat that is pushing against this defense wall, and then all of a sudden comes up red and glowing like it did two eruptions prior. Um, that's the danger, and you don't see it when you look at all that black topping. And this liquid lava river is only at a depth of two to three meters, so basically something like seven to ten feet. So it's not deep, and they want to cool this down to also underground widen the barrier for for this liquid dangerous underground lava. It's, it's they're very, very liquid, right? And the liquid stuff flows fast if it breaches the defense wall. We have already seen that. And basically what the EFLA engineer says, and this is his quote, he says, you could actually dig into the edge. And if you dig too deep, then you could have this stuff coming at you, floating against you. And you don't want that, right? Because that just destroys your excavator right away, then you're stuck in it, right? You don't, you don't want that to happen to any worker there. That's very, very dangerous. So that's why they're using the cooling to strengthen the lava rim. And they say that is the main task, to keep the lava river flowing on the other side, not flowing into Sangi. And once that is done, then they can make the defense walls higher on top of all of this, right? To also keep that flow that's flowing against it under control because the stuff that flows underground is still lifting up that lava carpet and still threatening these defense walls. So right now, what we can say, the crater, the of these three craters that were still erupting, the middle one was the strongest one. And what they report today is the strongest one has decreased a lot early this morning, November 25th. But the good thing is this central crater feeds most of the lava flow that flows along these defense walls. Um, but they're saying their work is far from finished. It's still enough flow that could be dangerous. And although they're strengthening the defense walls and they're, the cooling of the lava went well, they're still not done. They're far from done. And you have to remember, especially the defense walls around the Blue Lagoon, the, far, the further west it goes, they haven't really raised them too high or paid too much attention in the previous eruptions because it was only like the, the northern defense walls around early Swartzangi that were threatened. The lava has never flowed that far west as it did this time. So what they're doing is they want to 
increase it up to four meters in this area and they say it needs to be stretched further up as there is still weakness from here up to L alone. So that's the name of this one defense wall further west. Um, they say L1, that's that's the basically the northern defense wall um, where the lava was active during the summer is in top condition because they kept raising it, they kept strengthening it. And the lava that flowed along that defense wall in the previous eruption is now solidified and also acts as an additional barrier for that new lava flow. But everything that has flowed west where it's never flowed before, that is a major threat. And again, I, I want to tell you what the Icelandic Meteorological Office has stated today, and they're still on warning watch. They say, yeah, the visible activity of the eruption at the Sutnuka Crater series has decreased slightly, slightly since yesterday. And the lava flow that did flow to the west towards the dikes at Svartsengi and the Blue Lagoon has slowed down and cooled on the surface. So it's not so visible flowing on the surface anymore. So that's what the Met Office has announced. But they're also saying the lava flow is expected to continue below the surface. And we just talked about this. This is the danger. Now we have the crater on to the north. That's the most active right now and now from this guy the lava flow now runs to the east so the northern crater is not sending much to the west the southernmost crater is also still active and magma is occasionally um, also still spewing out from the rim of this little crater that has formed there and this is very interesting you have to look at infrared pictures that shows you the danger that shows you this monster that is creeping underneath this lava um, this black lava carpet, it shows the movement of the lava. And look at this, look at this, there you see, you see it glowing, right? So, and you see the blue lagoon in this picture and you see even at the most Western area, it's even spreading out there. That's a satellite image of NASA and Landsat 8. So on the one side, you can see the traditional photograph and on the other, a multispectral image where infrared channels are used to analyze what is happening in this lava bed. And both pictures show the same area at the same time. And what I'm saying is what you see on the right, that is what you visibly see. But what you see on the left, that's the creeping monster that is still there. And guys, if you're a member of my channel, um, check out the latest video that I have released there. I'm I'm going into a little bit more depth there, if you know what I mean. Um, we're talking about this. Um, so this multi-spectral image clearly shows these lava flows to the west and to the east. Um, then we see in the middle there we see two craters. The one um, on the northernmost area um, that rises out of it and then you can see lava flowing to the east from there. Um, and the lava, the, the crater that is in the center of the image that they said just visibly died down, that is still sending the most lava to the west. And then in that picture, you can barely see the southernmost crater, but a natural disaster expert at the Icelandic Meteorological Office has said um, that this crater always was by far the least active. And then this is the, another normal pictures from NASA's Landsat 8 satellite. There you can also see the smoke, the lava that comes from the crater from the eruption. It's going out to the sea. It's going a little bit over the eastern edge of Grindavik. But you can see how far this lava has spread around Svartsengi and the Blue Lagoon. You see these little blue ponds there. That's the Blue Lagoon. And let's talk about the Blue Lagoon parking lot again. Um, they ha have already started to raise the defense walls three to four meters. And th if you see this picture here where they're building a dike basically right into that lava bed, this is basically the area I think what they're saying is where the parking lot used to be. And this is how this looks right now. So. Wow, right? 
So the area where they're working the most is where the lava has flowed over the hot water pipes. That is, and then from there further west to where the parking lot of the Blue Lagoon was. Uh, so that's where they need to do some work. And also engineers confirm that yesterday the lava carpets have risen that far that they have reached the height of the defense walls. So very, very urgent matter. So the height, and this is the dangerous thing, the height of the defense walls has been reached in that section from where the hot water pipes are and where the parking lot was. So if something creeps over there, the Blue Lagoon is right there. So they're working right now. They have about 25 to 30 workers there that work continuously to protect Sword Sangi. And they estimate that this work will continue through the next few days. So guys, yeah, that was the latest. Check out my last video. This also gives you a deeper insight in everything that is happening. Thanks for your support. I will release another update video soon. Um, stay safe, be prepared wherever you are, guys. And if you want to support the channel, check out my Buy Me A Coffee website. Here is a QR code that leads you there. But the link is also in the description of this video. And hey, if you want to become a member for more behind the scenes videos of what I'm doing, what's going on with Apollo and with the farm, with everything, also a little bit of gossip, um, become a member of my channel. Click the join button or click the link in the description of this video. I'd love to see you there. And uh, yeah, if you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe, join our wonderful group of people and see you in the next one. Here are the videos in the end screen, guys. Bye-bye.